Say you just ate a nice meal, a sandwich, a box of juice or something like that. Have you ever wondered how the substances in your sandwich and in your juice are converted to energy and other substances that can be used by the cell? Well, that is taken care by the digestive system and the process by which the complex substances in our food are converted to simpler substances is known as digestion. And once the food is digested, the simple molecules, now they can also be called nutrients, they are transported to all parts of the body by the blood and the cells then use up the nutrients to perform various functions like produce energy, build new cells, etc. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the different parts of the digestive system. We are going to focus on the mouth, buccal cavity, the esophagus and the stomach. In another video, we will talk about the small and large intestines and the accessory organs like the liver, gallbladder and pancreas. So you can think of the digestive system as one long tube that extends from the mouth to the anus. So the food as we take it in through the mouth spends a lot of time inside your digestive system where it is completely broken down into simple small molecules that can be taken up by the blood and whatever waste is produced is excreted out of the anus. So what happens to the food inside the mouth? First let's take a look at that. So the mouth that is also called the buccal cavity is what is covered by your cheeks on both sides and the palates on the top and bottom. Your mouth has 32 teeth arranged in two rows of 16. The function of the teeth is to make sure that the food we eat is broken down or chewed into smaller pieces. Apart from teeth, we also have a tongue which is a muscular structure. The tongue also aids in chewing and mashing the food. Your tongue has taste buds that help you taste the food and you can figure out tastes like sweet, salty, umami, sour and bitter. But why do we need to chew and mash the food? Well, that's because of the saliva produced by the salivary glands. Saliva is mostly made up of water, but it also contains a substance known as salivary amylase. Now, the salivary amylase is an enzyme that begins the digestion of starch. Starch is a carbohydrate, as you know. So, you can say that the digestion of carbohydrate begins in the mouth itself. So, this is why it's very important to chew and properly mash the food in our mouth before we swallow it. So, that when we chew the food, the food gets mixed with the saliva, mixed with the salivary amylase, which then begins the process of starch digestion. The large pieces of food that we eat and as we chew it and mash it and the bits of food that we swallow is known as the bolus. And from the buccal cavity, the bolus enters the esophagus through the pharynx. So next we will take a look at the esophagus. So the esophagus is the tube that basically connects the buccal cavity, the back of your mouth to the stomach. So here is the back of your mouth and the pharynx and here is the stomach. The esophagus is around 10 centimeters long and around 3 centimeters wide. And it is layered with several layers of smooth muscles. Now, there is a structure known as epiglottis at the base of the pharynx here. This is a leaf shaped structure that is very important because it prevents the food from entering the trachea. So, at the pharynx you have two tubes. One tube is the esophagus that goes to the stomach and the other is the trachea that goes to the lungs. So, what happens is that epiglottis makes sure that the food goes only into the esophagus and not into the lungs. Because if it goes to the lungs, there is no place for food to go beyond the lungs, which could cause an obstruction in your airways, which would block the airways and make it difficult to breathe. So, that's why epiglottis is very important. It prevents the food from entering your lungs. Now, I told you that the esophagus is lined with layers of smooth muscles, right? It's not just the esophagus, basically the entire digestive system is layered with several layers of smooth muscles and these smooth muscles contract and relax and as they are contracting and relaxing, the food bolus moves through the digestive system. So, once we swallow, 
from our buccal cavity and the food enters the esophagus the muscles in the esophagus they contract and relax which pushes the food down the esophagus into the stomach this movement of food down the esophagus because of the contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles is known as peristalsis so each food bolus takes around 2 to 3 seconds to pass through the esophagus and enter the stomach now this is a very average value it really depends on the size of the food bolus that we are swallowing so what happens to the food in the stomach next we'll take a look at that so the stomach is like a j shaped organ situated at the base of the esophagus at the base of the esophagus is a muscle known as the esophageal sphincter which controls the amount of food entering the stomach now this rounded portion of the stomach close to the esophagus is known as the fundus and this broad part of the stomach that is known as the cardiac stomach and this bent portion here this rounded portion here this is the pylorus or the pyloric stomach now the stomach also has a layer of mucus that covers the entirety of the stomach why is this mucus layer important that's because the gastric glands in the stomach produce hydrochloric acid or hcl if you've been to the biology or chemistry lab your teachers might have told you that hydrochloric acid is a highly dangerous highly acidic acid and they might have cautioned you not to touch it with your hands and to use caution when you're handling it then if it is so dangerous for us to touch just imagine how sensitive it would be to our cells inside the body so to protect the cells from this hydrochloric acid the stomach has a layer of mucus but why does our stomach even produce hydrochloric acid if it's such a dangerous substance well that has to do with this enzyme pepsinogen now pepsinogen is an inactive enzyme it cannot function yet it has to be converted into its active form which is known as pepsin for pepsinogen to be converted to pepsin it needs a ph of around 1.5 to 3.5 it needs an acidic environment and that acidic environment is what is provided by hydrochloric acid so in the acidic environment in the presence of hydrochloric acid pepsinogen is converted to pepsin and now this active form pepsin begins to break down proteins so proteins as you know are long molecules they are extremely lengthy so in the stomach these lengthy proteins are broken down into smaller proteins they are called peptones but the complete digestion of proteins occurs in the small intestine only in the stomach the proteins are partially digested into peptones so we can say that the partial digestion of carbohydrates especially starch occurs in the mouth itself with the help of the salivary amylase and proteins the partial digestion begins in the stomach itself with the help of pepsin apart from being involved in converting pepsinogen to pepsin the hydrochloric acid in our stomach also kills bacteria and other harmful microorganisms that have entered the body through our food thereby preventing any food born illnesses in the stomach the food spends around 40 minutes to 2 hours and in this time the smooth muscles in the stomach churn like they mix the food thoroughly with hydrochloric acid and the gastric juices so that the proteins are digested into smaller peptones and through the pyloric sphincter the food enters the small intestine we'll talk about the small intestine and the large intestine in another video